And actually what we find inside is this hurt younger self who needs to be, who needs to know they're not alone anymore. Mm -hmm. And we can be that person for ourselves and other people can too, but that that's the, that's the work and it's really possible. And then as we're free from those old beliefs and old conditionings, that's when we can just start to really enjoy our life. So we might have to work with our nervous system. We might have to learn how to breathe. You know, we can learn some grounding techniques and those kinds of things. But all of those are in support of the relationship that we can have with ourselves. And it's really nice. possible. It's ideal if we have that safe, secure attachment as children. But, but there's, no, um, there's no time in our lives when it's not possible to heal. You know, the first time I see an ad adaptation, I'm like, oh my gosh, how did I not know that sooner? How did I not see that sooner? How did I live from that thought without even realizing I had the thought? So one of the ways that that works, one of the reasons that we don't see it sooner is that our perception of threat is unconscious mind. So Dr. Stephen Porges named the term neuroception. So we have our perception where we use our eyes and ears, but our neuroception is where our primitive brain says safe, not safe. Do I need to go into an adaptive strategy? Do I not? And so because that's unconscious and it's under our awareness, one of the things we can do is bring it up into our awareness. And that's a real benefit of the somatic mindfulness practices. Yes. So the inner critic is um, like any part of us. It's better if we don't reject it or suppress it. And that can be really hard to do if we've got that nasty, mean kind of voice coming into our head. So one of the one of the ways we can work with that is to to really look at well why is it there like is it there to protect me is it trying to help me not risk something by playing small um, is it an internalized voice of a parent that's often the case too so we want to be able to bring it up out of unconsciousness so we want to be able to track what's going on when I hear that inner critic how is it trying to help me. And is it actually helping me? Because it's not. But everybody has experienced not being included. Everybody's experienced trying to be the good kid or, or saying, screw it, that's not going to work. And I'm going to be the bad kid instead. You know, mm -hmm. We have all of this ordinary trauma. When we're overwhelmed, and this happens really all the time when we're a child, we don't really have the power to control our circumstances as a child. When we're overwhelmed, we find a way to get out of it. And then this is our adaptive strategies. So one of them is that we go into some kind of a disconnection and we store it in our body. And it's stored with sensation as well as the associated memories. Our nervous system is like this historical document in our body that says, oh, remember that time when you were in grade three when that happened? Let's make sure that doesn't happen again. And so we just have this history that's largely nonverbal, although there might be memories that come up with some of the sensations in our bodies. So when we have the sensations in our bodies, and I know where you've got a lot of people that are going to be addressing the tools of how to work with that. But one of the ways really kind of at the foundation is to be able to be here and to really just, okay, I've got this sensation. What does that mean? Lots of times people will have a feeling of, of pressure in their throat to notice, oh, I can actually breathe. It's not actually preventing me from breathing. Or to notice, okay, when I tune into my breath and my stomach area, I can feel that knot of fear. So to notice it, to notice there's space around it, that, that we don't get kind of glued to it. And so part of the thing that happens to come back to catastrophic thinking yes. is that the negativity bias in the brain says, let's assume that everything's going to go wrong. And how am I going to stay alive? And the positive things that happen to us, they don't even register. So one of the things that we can really do is notice the positive things, but also pay attention to the negative ones in terms of, okay, my primitive brain is trying to give me a message. It's a blunt instrument. Our primitive brain is trying to keep us safe by, pre by predicting all of the hard things that could happen. So we need to be in our conscious adult brain and body in order to know that that's not true.